going on, everyone? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's been three weeks or so. I get it. I uh, haven't made time for you guys, and I've been super busy. So I figured I'll give you a little update here on what's been going on and talk about some of my approaches towards some picky feeders. So stick around, and let's get right to it. So as many of you guys know, I did take a bite a little over a week ago from one of our lace monitors at work and uh, she got me on the thumb primarily and a little bit on uh, this finger which is scabbed, tender, but pretty much just gonna do its thing. Uh, the thumb is not quite there yet, that gash is pretty big, I still have to wear a brace to keep it immobile so I don't like bend it too far and split it wide back open again. Uh, super tender still, but tomorrow's gonna be my last day of antibiotics and uh, hopefully just ride this out and let it heal on its own. I'm hoping to only have to wear this brace for another week or two, depending on how the, uh, the old thumb likes to heal up and we'll see how that goes. But either way, on the mend, and that's great. This hasn't really slowed me down as far as cleaning, taking care of animals and stuff. And I'm pretty much back to full speed at work. In fact, I'm even gonna get back into some of the cage building this week, hopefully. Uh, weather's been cold and a little rainy, so slow time means get productive. So um, after that, I uh, had a whole uh, morph market debacle. Uh, if any of y'all are on uh, social media, unfortunately, like we are, you probably saw that whole uh, snafu. Um, the I, I won't get too much into it, but I, I did want to say that the, the big takeaway for me is that I can do better, and uh, I reached out to that customer that... Uh, I had the initial interaction that sort of like spearheaded all of it and, and we reconciled and we chatted and um, yeah, it was actually really nice. So he's a really great guy and uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. But um, that's kind of all I'm going to say about it. Um, as a result of that as well, I am uh, having a professional build a nice new website. So look forward to that. Of course, when that happens, I will announce it, and let you guys know and we'll, we'll take a dive at it and then I'll probably be asking for a lot of feedback. I kind of have a loose idea of how we're going to set it up but anyway that is happening and uh, I'm really looking forward to having a nice professional website with a professional domain the whole thing no none of the free like um, you know Weebly or Wix stuff not that there's anything wrong with that but we're here we're trying to go here so that's what we're gonna do but the rest of this video isn't gonna be me rambling about what's been going on I did want to talk about uh, some tricks for picky carpet python feeders in particular that, um, you know, if you haven't heard of these, keep these tools in your back pocket. You can use them for more than just carpet pythons, of course. But I have had quite a few babies this year, and when you get into these numbers, inevitably some of them are not going to eat well or right on the, the get-go. So you kind of got to tease it out and figure it out. So I figured I would show you a couple examples and talk about... Um, their situation and how I figured it out. Okay, so this beautiful little citrus tiger boy here at first did not eat the initially offered fuzzy or hopper mice like I tend to start with. Um, after a few tries, switched over to rat pinkies and boom, that was all he needed. He just prefers the smell and taste of rats. Now why do I start with hoppers as opposed to rats in the first place? Well, at a small size, you're only able to really feed them pinky rats, whereas if you go into the mice territory, you can do fuzzies or hoppers, you got a little wiggle room. The difference between the two is the hopper or the mouse prey of equivalent size compared to the rat will have a higher calcium profile, less kind of water waste and fat. Um, and I find uh, that the roughage and everything helps kind of get them started, gets their gut in gear and really helps them rip and uh, take off pretty well and then eventually switch them to two rats when appropriate but um, yeah this little dude is happy eating rats um, the downside to rat pinkies is because they're so small and 
don't really have much roughage or skeleton, your snakes often have very runny stools. So you just gotta make sure they're well hydrated and you're, you might even feed them a little bit more frequently. So, but yeah, that was kind of like the easiest of the challenges in picky feeders this season. So let's take a look at one a little bit more difficult than this guy. So this grumpy little, little albino citrus tiger here is a, a fantastic feeder. However, she needed a little bit of teasing out what she wanted. And she's she's a little close to my face, so I'm gonna keep an eye on her because she does have the ability to turn around and pop me in the nose. And as much as y'all will probably think that's funny, we're gonna avoid that. So this girl didn't want to eat for the first few months. She ate a couple times, got switched onto hoppers, and then kind of stopped. Figured, well, she knows what she's doing, but she clearly doesn't like the frozen thought. So, got her some live. She started eating the live. I was like, oh great, that's something, as long as you're eating, whatever you want. After a few meals of offering her live, just dropping it in, I, uh, I offered her a live on the tongs, kind of how I would with frozen thought, and she ate it like she's been born to do it. So after determining she's got the confidence, she knows what she's doing, I'm going to see if I can sneak one in, sneak a frozen thought in the next time. Uh, after she would eaten about four consistent live meals, uh, I just kind of saw that she was getting it. She was figuring it out. So the other day, full, pulled a, a frozen thought, smaller than normal food item, just to make sure it wasn't very intimidating for her. And she snatched it up like there was no, uh, no difference. So she's now back on to frozen thought consistently and uh, we'll go to her new home and hopefully stay on that trajectory and just thrive and grow. She's, uh, she's an eating machine, so. All right, so that was probably like a, a level two difficulty. Now, I figure we could look at a pretty difficult one that is actually still ongoing. And I will talk about how I intend to accomplish getting this animal established because I've done this method in the past. Okay, so this little teeny tiny guy is a caramel albino citrus tiger. Much smaller than the last one we were looking at, much skinnier, and uh, much more um, flighty, nervous, not a very confident animal, right? So uh, something's off with this guy. Nothing changed in his environment. He just decided he's not confident anymore. So after he hatched, just like everybody else, gave him a few weeks to, to, to digest and absorb all the, the yolk nutrients and let him get hungry and then started offering and doing the feed trials. Well, he took, uh, what we do? He took two fuzzies in June, the first two offered, and then proceeded to go on a hunger strike for the last four months. So that's been fun. I've tried literally everything, rats, mice, live, frozen, scented with gecko shed, scented with chick down. Um, I've even thrown in a live gecko. I've uh, done everything with this animal. And so now I'm going to uh, some desperate times, call for desperate measures type approach. And we're doing some assist feeding of rat tails to get something going into the gut to get it stimulated. Now, why rat tails? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I'm gonna be feeding large rats to a few other animals. I will snip off a couple inches at the end of the tail where it's almost as thick as a pencil, not quite, and I'll snip it at an angle and I will restrain this animal and assist feed that, use that little angled cut to wedge its mouth open and force that down. And I use a rat tail because the, the bristly hairs on it point in a certain direction point basically outwards towards the front of the mouth if I'm pushing it in from the cut uh, and in down and it's uncomfortable for a snake to regurgitate that with those hairs pointing outwards so it's kind of difficult for them to fight it and uh, I like to get it down past their their jaw muscles back there and try and gently um, massage it back on in to a point where they really can't spit it out and then I just let them go and uh, hope that they figure it out and I'll do this repeatedly, um, you know, until 
I feel like they've had enough in there and then I'll just try and offer and just rinse and repeat sort of thing and hopefully they figure it out um, you know what the transition will be is do some rat tails and then go to a rat pinky because the scent will be similar so we'll see uh, how this little dude goes over the next few months but uh, he's obviously not listed for sale, not going anywhere, and he's going to stay in my care until he figures it out or doesn't. So that is the reality. Um, I don't want to put a, a weak animal out into the hobby or anybody's hands. Uh, you know, if the animal isn't eating, it isn't established, and I'm not confident in doing well for somebody, then that's just not fair. So uh, this will be my burden to bear. and. Give it a the good old hard college try and see if we can't figure it out. But yeah, I hope uh, I hope that gives you guys a little bit of insight into some of the difficulties that you can encounter when breeding and producing babies, and some of the ways that you can tackle some of those challenges. Uh, there's obviously many more scents and tricks and tips and things that you can do, uh, but these are some of the the approaches that I've used with success over the years and I figured I would share that with you as we are dealing with that currently so uh, without wasting too much more of your time I appreciate you guys still sticking with me and supporting the channel even though I've been rather inconsistent lately uh, I wanted to give a big shout out to my sponsors Heli Guy Serpents Chris you're the man um, everybody thank you for going and check out HeliGuySerpents.com and his Instagram at Heli Guy Serpents he makes some amazing 3d printed snake perching and furniture and fun exploration and exercise things like he's getting really creative so give him a shout he's got discounts for uh, my patreon members discounts for the public run in at different times so uh, go check in tap into that vein and see what you can get for your animals um, and speaking of sponsors and huge thanks much love to reptiles express you guys are the best reptiles express and their sister company premium crickets have discount codes going for me riley50 at uh, at Reptiles Express will get you 50% off up to 10 shipping labels. Riley15 at PremiumCrickets.com will get you 50% off your order. So take advantage of those uh, those deals before the holidays, save you some money, and uh, don't forget to ship with the best with Reptiles Express. And like I said, Patreon members get discounts, so you can always go check me out on Patreon, join the family that we've got growing over there. Last but certainly not least, please, please, please go show your support and become a member for US Arc. Um, support US Arc Florida as well. I'll have all the information below. Membership is super important. It's really easy to do. And uh, if they are the lobbying body for all of our legislative hurdles that we as a, a community have to encounter and face head on. So uh, let's support them as they support us. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Love your reptiles, love your snakes. Love y'all. Love peace and chicken grease. Deuces. <laughs>